Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We are ready to begin. Please stand for the National Anthem of St. Lucia. Dame Prelette Louise, Mrs. Ingrid Kosak, Chair of the Board of Governors of the South Louis Community College, Dr. Maroon Sinclair Louise, Vice Principal of the South Louis Community College, our sponsors in the persons of the OECS, Flo, Valerie, and Massey Stores, members of faculty and staff of the South Louis Community College, specially invited guests. Live stream viewers, good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Hello. Sounds better. Welcome to the launch and the inaugural lecture of Uprising, the Illumination Series. This lecture series has been long in the making, but the execution of this first event was quite swift. The South Louis Community College is poised on the foundation set by our namesake, Lua Laureate, South Louis, to inspire, to encourage, and to facilitate the sharing of knowledge at the highest level. We are indeed proud, as the premier indigenous institution, to be a catalyst for this movement that will illuminate our society. On behalf of the board, management, faculty, staff, and students of the South Louis Community College, it is my pleasure as the mistress of ceremonies of this proceedings to welcome you, our in-house audience, and our online viewers to this event. We are joined online on our SALCC Facebook page and SELCC TV by a much wider audience and we thank you for your participation in this event. Welcome and to give you some background as to what brought all of this about, I invite the chair of this committee, Mr. Vladimir Lucien, to give you that information. Welcome, Mr. Lucien. Thank you, Mistress of Ceremonies. Um, uh, protocol having been established, I, uh, I'd like to welcome you to Sir Arthur Lewis, the hub of intellectual activity at, uh, at Institute Lucia, and hopefully soon, well, we, we, we've been there before, and we'll be recognized more and more as, as that in the region as well. And beyond. Um, so to give you some background about Illumination, Uprising, the Illumination series, as uh, Nancy said, it was long in the making and also short in the making. Um, so the genesis of the Illumination series um, is located in a desire expressed by the Vice Principal um, to animate intellectual and community-oriented activity here on campus. Go on campus, what you were really asking for was the erection of a bridge. Highways, just like our highways, we have commodious enough to take two-way traffic. Okay, between the college going out and the community coming in. Um, the series was long in the making, but at last it's finally here. In our beginnings, the idea was to somehow privilege areas of marginalized areas of knowledge production. Um, that is persons we don't often hear from in our society. 
The initial idea which remains part of our vision was to find persons and stories and exceptional achievement within our society, but outside of conventional and more recognized areas. And to give a platform so that not only can the society benefit from hearing them, but that the college as an ever-evolving entity would as well. In the process, it dawned upon me that even within our seemingly privileged academic environment, our knowledge production was also somewhat marginalized. This problem, of course, is not unique to us, but abounds in universities all over the world, where the research efforts of scholars find their work lodged in dusty libraries physically, and beyond that, in a sort of rarefied air that one associates with iron towers, or the rarefied air of the morn, for instance. But this research is entirely valuable, especially with droves of young St. Lucian academics reinvigorating the intellectual landscape, with panache, chutzpah, eclat, and with a determined effort to make the pursuits relevant and with a deepening social concern, which is very important. So we thought, why not begin with those amongst us, helping us to build this bridge? And here we are, upon this bridge. And here you are, the community, already with us in this food mail connection. In conceptualizing the lectures, the idea was that we were doing, what we were doing was a sort of uprising, as you can tell from the name. Um, in what seems or what may have been an intellectual environment that we thought needed some kind of stimulation. Um, but the positive type of uprising. So the idea is to redefine the word and to, to relate it to its etymological beginnings in uprising, ascendancy, um, you know, and also to just like taking a bad thing and turning it good. I think that's the kind of thing that we need. So if the uprisings we see in our society are going to be intellectual engagements, engagements with community, things connecting people, then that's exactly what we are trying to do. Another interesting factor, uh, perhaps fortuitous, not planned at all, was in thinking of the name of the lecture and having not decided who the inaugural lecturer would be, we found an interesting connection between who was chosen as the inaugural lecturer and the name of the lecture, not uprising now. Uh, not, not, he's not an upriser, but I'm talking about the illuminations aspect. Our, our guest speaker today is Dr. Winston Fulgence, and I know he thinks, or you may think, that that is a corruption of Fulgence, but I'm, 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 I, I want to think that it is actually related to effulgent light. Okay? So illumination lecture, and we have Dr. Winston effulgent or Fulgence, if you may. Right? So, I would just like to thank everybody for being here, thank our sponsors immensely for the support they gave. Um, I would like to thank the chair of the board for being here, all faculty, it's very beautiful to see all of you here. The vice principal for getting it started and really adamant about having this happen here on campus, so that the physical plant, so that the idea of uh, everything now starts to connect with what we hope to represent with uprising. Uh, last but not least at all is um, as chair of the committee, I have to, have to, have to say a huge thank you to the committee itself. Um, when we got started, I didn't know, we didn't know who we were working with at all. And a lot of it were, were very, very fortunate events. I was speaking to one committee member and another who overheard and we were like, how come you didn't ask me? So that's the nature of, you know, talent we have and you just bump into it. So, um, Mrs. Natalie Julie Fannis, who was responsible for our PR and all of that kind of stuff, and doing more beyond that. Um, we had Miss Dora Henry, who is just magical in the way she organizes everything and gets things done. I don't know. She seems to have something like, she, she has something of blood. She knows how everything works around here in a way that I don't. Um, we had Mr. Michael Hart, who is, has brought a fresh energy to the campus. He's new but brought fresh energy and enthusiasm, as well as um, the guy who wears all the hats, um, Mr. Roy Sullivan, um, on the committee as well. So I had an amazing team to work with. I, I had to do very little. Um, so they, they are the ones who, who deserve most of the gratitude here. Um, so with that said, welcome. I hope we have an enjoyable and illuminating evening. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lucien. I probably should have said, warned you, that he has a way with words. <laughs> he is a literary giant for us here at Southern He is 
decorated prize winner, and we look forward to him winning the ultimate prize that he will. I leave it at that for now. So, Mr. Lucien has given you the background. We had some support in putting this together, particularly because we wanted a larger audience. We understand the issues that persons may have leaving their homes during the week, the on an evening, and we wanted to ensure that we could reach far and wide. And with our e-learning specialists on campus, we are able to do that. So we want to recognize at this time the sponsors who made this possible, um, beginning with our own research institute on campus, Valerie, um, who has been pioneering a lot of work here. So to make a few remarks on behalf of Valerie is Mr. Kurt Harris. Good evening, Good evening one and all. Um, the remarks that I am going to give are not of my own. I have been asked by the chair of Valerie, who Mr. Vernie Manuel, whose son is ill um, at the moment down with this flu bug, which seems to be affecting quite a few persons, to give these remarks on his behalf. So please, it's not my words, I'm just the messenger, so excuse me if anything goes wrong. <laughs> Mr. Emmanuel told me to state clearly that when Valerie was approached to support this particular event, he immediately told the vice principal that well, there, there is absolutely, absolutely no, no way, way that, that Valerie, Valerie would, would not support, support an, event an event of this, of this nature. nature. The, purpose the purpose of Valerie, of Valerie is, is to do to research, research and to and bring, bring that, that research, research to, to the, the people, people within, within our, our community, community and, and the wider, wider world. world. And when, and when the, the idea, idea of this, of this particular, particular um, lecture, lecture series was, was sold, sold to Valerie, Valerie he immediately understood that, that the research, the information, the information and, the and the knowledge, knowledge that, that this particular series would bring, bring to the wider, wider public is exactly what Valerie, Valerie is about. about. It, is it is bringing to the, to the community exactly, exactly what the community, the community wants, wants and, what and what the community, the community needs. needs. It's, it's there, there to uplift. uplift. And like, and like Mr. Mr. Lucian said, said the, the uprising was, was also something that excited, excited him as well. well. Illumination, Illumination and, and rising. And you've and noticed, noticed that, that no light, light comes, comes from, from the bottom. bottom. Light generally light comes from the top. top. So, so you, you have, have to rise towards the light. So Mr. Emmanuel asked me to say, Thank, Thank you, you. And, and sure that, that I'm very, very brief, brief and that Valerie will continue, continue to support all of the efforts of the, efforts of the college, college as, as we, we seek to engender more research, more, more innovation, innovation, and more creativity, creativity within, within our, our society. society. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you so much, Dean Harris. Dean Harris, Dean Harris is the Dean of the Division of Technical Education and Management Studies, and he was actually one of those involved in uh, the execution of the first project of Valerie, which was the solarization project. And that was quite successful, had its challenges, but I think they realized what, what they needed to accomplish and worked around it. It's an interesting story that maybe one of these days he will have to tell in a forum like this. So thank you, Dean Harris. Um, although we don't have other representatives of, of sponsors here, here. I, would I would still like, like to recognize, recognize um, the assistance of Flo in, in allowing us to stream live this evening, evening. and, and um, the OACS, OACS who works, works closely, closely with us um, in terms of a project for developing, for developing our ICT, ICT capacities. capacities. I, also I also want, want to recognize, recognize Mr. Ted Sanford, who is here streaming, streaming live on Facebook, Facebook with us. His, his company, company is Asset, Asset Creation. Creation. So, so a round of applause for all of our sponsors who have really made, made this, this event, event possible. possible. So we so have we officially, officially launched, launched this, this series, series and, and this, this evening, evening we are here, here for our inaugural, inaugural lecture, lecture from, from a distinguished, distinguished son, of son of the soil. soil. And, the and the introduction of our lecture, lecture this, evening this evening will be done by, by a fellow colleague who almost shares the same working, working space. space. So, so they are like room, room buddies, buddies almost. almost. Please, Please help me welcome, welcome Dr. Jani Joseph, lecturer of literature and communication in Caribbean. Studies. Good night, everyone. Um, um, I, wish I wish to adopt, to adopt the, protocol the protocol already established, established earlier tonight. tonight. 
Winston, Winston F. Fulgens, Fulgens is, a is a lecturer, lecturer in history, history at the Sir Arthur Lewis Community, Community College. College. He is an, an anthropologist, anthropologist who holds a BA in history from the University of the West Indies and an MA in anthropology from the University of Florida, where as a Fulbright scholar, he focused on Caribbean prehistory and heritage management. He completed a PhD in archeology span at the University of York in the United Kingdom, where he was a Marie Curie research fellow from 2012 to 2015. His thesis, His thesis was a comparative study of monuments to commemorate slavery in the regions involved in transatlantic slavery and slave trade. He has published several papers on the role of history, cultural heritage management, and the role of museums in national development. So I'd like to invite Dr. Fulgen to deliver tonight's lecture and let us give him a round of applause as he makes his way to the podium. Dame Paulette Louise, members, members of the Diplomatic Corps, Ms. Ingrid Flosak, the Chair of the Board of Governors of South Louis Community College, Dr. Moulin Saint Clair, Vice Principal of the South Louis Community College, sponsors, members of faculty and staff of SALCC, students, and specially invited guests, and live viewers, live and viewers. <laughs> And online, online viewers. viewers. Um, good, evening. good evening. I will, I will say, say thank, thank you very, very much, much to the committee who put, put this together, together and I would and like to give them a round of applause. applause. This, has, this been has been a long time coming, coming. And, it and, and it has finally happened and it's been launched. launched. And I am, I am honored, honored to be the first person to actually make this presentation. presentation. Um, um, I remember a few years ago lamenting with some of my colleagues that I had gone to do this research and, and I had already, I had already spoken, spoken to, to two, two classes, classes of sixth six graders, graders in Minnesota, in, Minnesota, in the in US of A, and I had, and I had not been able, able to speak at any public, public forum in St. Lucia about my research. research. And, and I am really, really excited, excited here. here. So, so if, if I, I start, start to stumble and so on, it's excitement, so please bear with me. This is a very strange title, Remembering and Forgetting. I, I think, think it probably should have read, probably should have read remembering, remembering to Forget, forget. an Archaeology of the Memory of Slavery in St. Lucia. Lucia. Why, why archaeology is what I'm trained in, in, and why, why am I doing archaeology with a monument? monument. The monument, the monument is, my is my artifact, artifact. Because, because without an artifact, artifact we, have we have no archaeology. No uh, why, why am I talking, talking about the memory? Memory, memory is, is a new tool that's being used by researchers these days because um, historians, historians have found, have found that, that the old texts and so on, which have been the cornerstone of history making, are not as, as adequate, adequate as they used to be. We need to understand, understand how it is that people think as a group, why they think as a group, and the, the texture of what allows them to create identities that are shared. So I'm going to try to excavate the texture of the memory of St. Lucia to see, to see if we, we can, can understand, understand why we are we very are good at remembering, remembering to, forget. to forget. I'm remembering, I'm remembering to, forget to forget a specific, specific issue, issue, an issue I think is a founding issue, issue for the Caribbean, Caribbean and St. Lucia, Lucia, the issue, the issue of, of slavery. slavery. I expect that I, I will upset, upset a few people. people. If, I if I don't, I have not done my job here this evening. evening. Remembering, remembering to forget. To forget. This presentation is part of a larger inquiry into the increase of memorialization of the transatlantic slave freedom and slavery since the 1990s, and the tool for that will be monuments and memorials in the Atlantic world. The, re the, re um, the region where the transatlantic slave trade and slavery operated for almost 300 years. I am concerned here with the processes local, local national, national, and international, international which, which led to the creation, to the creation of, of these monuments, monuments and how they were used to sustain, sustain the memory of the transatlantic slave trade or not. 
and the study will also interrogate the stakeholders involved in the processes of memorialization, along with their role in the process and the political context within which all of this is taking place, because we're dealing with the human being. Now, this, this is focused on St. Lucia this evening, but it's part of a wider project which took me to places far and wide. I was fortunate enough, although at the time it didn't feel that way, to have hit 12 countries in three years, looking at monuments and trying to decide which one or which process would best allow me to look at what I was interested in. The field work for this project was carried out over two years, and, and I, I chose, chose three, three sites. sites. That's, That's the, the wider project. project. The, the first, first was St. Lucia, Lucia. And, and St. Lucia, Lucia was an accident. accident. I, was I was not interested in St. Lucia at all because I had no idea we had, we had any monuments. monuments. In, fact, in fact, it was, it just, was just a success situation. situation. We, have we have nothing here, so why am I looking here? But I was fortunate enough that Caribbean Airlines bought Air Jamaica. Was it have to do with this? Because Caribbean Airlines bought Air Jamaica, they began to rationalize trips from Trinidad to Jamaica. Cutting, cutting off a lot of Air Jamaica's tra tra um, flights. Flight. I was I in St. Lucia, Lucia in February, and I was, and I was supposed, supposed to fly to Jamaica, Jamaica the Mecca of Monuments of Slavery, slavery where I was going, going to do my excavation of the memory of slavery in Jamaica. Jamaica. Unfortunately, Unfortunately, I didn't have a magic US, US visa, visa, so I so had, had to fly, fly from the Caribbean, Caribbean within the Caribbean, Caribbean to get to Jamaica. Jamaica. And, because and because of that rationalization, I could not get a flight. It was in April. I could find no flight to Jamaica within the Caribbean, the Caribbean until, until September. September. I, had I had to, in September, in September present to my, my, th my thesis panel, panel exactly, exactly what I had been doing. doing. I, was I was stuck. stuck. I, actually I actually had, had nothing, nothing to do. To do. Then, then Mr. Mr. Levy Harrell popped, popped into my house. My house. I, see I see him in here. here. And we were having a conversation. Oh, oh Solution Lucia has one. I picked up a newspaper the following day. There was something in there about the Freedom Monument. And this is how I was able to do this research. So again, I thank Air Jamaica, sorry, Caribbean Airlines for actually making this possible. All right. The case study for the first case study, which is this one, is St. Lucia. I spent a few months in St. Lucia, not by choice, of course. Remember, I was supposed to be going to Jamaica. Doing, doing interviews. interviews. And, because and because it was, it was home, home, I was able to speak, speak to people. people. But, but I was very, very, very um, worried, because worried because the problem, problem with doing research and doing it at home, home is that is you make certain assumptions. assumptions. And, that and that could actually, actually affect, affect what, what you, you find. find. And not and just that. I was very often speaking to people who had taught me, mentored me, and so on and so forth. So I had to be very, very, very careful how I went about doing my excavations. Unlike proper prehistoric archaeology, the people involved in the process actually could talk to me. Okay. okay. So the project, the project to create the monument, the monument in St. Lucia was, was one which was, which was supposed, supposed to memorialize a very important history, history historical, historical event in St. Lucia. Lucia. It, was it was the invasion, the invasion of St. Lucia, Lucia in 1796, 1796 by the British, by the British who, who intent, intent on reclaiming the island from the, from the French, French who had taken it. it. The battle we all, we all know, know about, about is the battle of the brigands, the Wigan, the Wigan. That, that pejorative, pejorative term has been used, that was used by the British military to refer to these people. people. In, In this battle, 2,000 formerly enslaved Africans fought on the French side to keep the island French, but more importantly, to maintain the freedom which they had been given by the French two years earlier. My research on this specific uh, monument for this event went the following way. I did, I did several, several interviews, interviews, interviews with people who were directly involved, involved in the process. In the process. I, also I also had to double, double check that what I was told as a good historian, a good archaeologist, archaeologist that, the that the documentation supported what I had been told. I had, I had to spend time, time in the archives, archives because, because I was looking at the national memory, the memory of St. Lucia. And I also was able to get access to the archives of the St. Lucia National Trust. Okay. The, people the people interviewed, interviewed were all involved in the process, process of the creating, creating the monument, the monument. and in, in order, order to create the monument, the National Trust, the National Trust, 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 the, National Trust, Trust, Trust the entity charged with protecting St. Lucia's natural, natural and cultural, and cultural heritage, heritage had created several, several committees, committees and, and these are the members who I was able to speak to. to. They, were they were directly involved in creating the monument. The monument. There was there the was Monument Committee and there was the National, National Heroes, Heroes Committee, which is, which is quite interesting because, because at some, some point, point in my, in my investigations, investigations, I had I trouble distinguishing between the two. two. 
and you will and understand, you understand why, why as we go along. I also, I also spoke with, with people, people from, from the Cultural Development, Development Foundation, Foundation because, because as, as the, process the process went along, went along I, realized I realized that between, between, nine, between, between um, by, by the year 2000, 2000 the CDF, the CDF had already, already become involved, involved in the, in the, pros pros uh, in the, the memorization, memorization process through the, the festivals, festivals which, which were being um, conducted. conducted. By the By end of the, the process, process, the CDF was responsible, responsible for ceremonies, ceremonies which commemorated emancipation, emancipation, not slavery, emancipation, emancipation through a national government, government um, san sanction, sanction and, and government-funded government funded ceremonies, ceremonies on, on the 1st of, of August every, every year. year. I also, I also found, found that I had to speak to, to Rastafari, Rastafari, Rastafarians, because, because as I found, I found out, to my, to my shock, shock the, the only people memorizing slavery in St. Lucia before 1996 were the Rastafarians. Rastafarians. And of course, they were proud to remind me of that and make the point. So I had to look at their rule. In addition to these interviews, archival research was carried out at the National Archives. Newspapers between the years of 1996 and 2000 were searched uh, in the process of creating, um, to examine, examine sorry, the process of creating a monument because I was interested in how the National Trust went about doing this in the public domain because the monument is made for public consumption. Signpost. I'd like, I'd like you to pay close attention, attention to what I'm going to do now, because what I'm going to do first is to show some slides to get you to see potential artifacts. We will look at them. We can't turn them around, unfortunately, but we will look at them, and I want you to think about what people wanted to depict when they were actually doing these. Then I will talk about the signpost, which I use to actually navigate um, the streams of knowledge and memory that I was coming across. So, whoops. Okay, the region I was looking at is the, what is now called the Atlantic world. Africa, Europe, North America, South America, and the Caribbean. I promise you this was nice and clear when I put the slide together. <laughs> Okay, okay, so we're so looking, looking at the transatlantic slave, slave trade. trade. People, People carried across from here, from here goods back over here, here and goods, goods back over here. here. The transatlantic trans slave, slave trade. trade. One, one of my, my sites, sites was Ghana. Ghana. The, the slave cells, cells. This, this one is the female dungeon at Elmina. This, this one. one. And, and this, this picture gives me chills every time I look at it because I took several shots of the entrance to the male dungeon. Every time I took it, this happened. A physician, a physician, somebody in physics would tell me it's just the light doing that. There's nothing going on, it's just the light. Fine. Okay, so this is the male dungeon. It goes, this goes down into three chambers, each chamber holding about a thousand people. This is Cape Coast Castle. It looks very nice when you stand here looking at it, but when you go in there, it's not a very pleasant place to be. This is a display by Laura Facey, a Jamaican artist. You'll see her of some of her work a little later. This gives me this gave me goosebumps when I saw it because I went to the museum not expecting to see this display. And this is actually figurines of human beings. Okay, and she puts it in a canoe, and on top of that she puts sugar cane. It's actually sugar cane there. Uh, I thought it was very powerful. This, this is a memorial in Nantes. It's, it's not a memorial to slavery, it's a memor memorial to abolition. abolition. And the city is very proud. They claim that it's the largest such monument in Europe. I don't doubt them because I went in. And this is a very, very interesting monument because when you go in there, it takes a while be before you begin to feel what's happening. When you go in, well, for me, I should say, when I walked in and I went in, I slowly became aware of the, the river outside washing up on the side. And as you go deeper, you start to feel that you're being compressed. Eventually, you start feeling like you're in a ship. And then you begin to understand what the, the creator was actually doing. I think he, was, um, he created a very large monument for um, the Holocaust as well. This, this is another monument. This one is in the Netherlands. Netherlands. I'm, sure I'm sure you know this so far, that, that very few of these monuments, monuments are straightforward. straightforward. If, we go, if back, we go back, the Ghanaian ones, ones 
the memory was poured in, and actually it is poured in, because a lot of these spaces were actually government buildings which were used for prisons, schools, army barracks, and so on. But now when you go there, it's a different type of place. You actually feel as a hunter. It's quite interesting, because like I said, some of them were even schools and army barracks, but now they're haunted because of the narrative that has been created around them and how people perform memory around them. This one this is a one new is a one. one. It's, it's um, the transatlantic sleep world you see here. It's in the UN. I was a little peeved because I knew about this. It was going to happen. And when I got to go to New York, I got the visa. Um, <laughs> I was, I was looking, looking for this, for and, this I and I couldn't find, find it, it, only to only realize, realize it's actually in the, in the UN, UN compound, compound where, you where you have to apply, apply for, a for a ticket, go through the tenstiles, tenstiles, do the security check, check and so on and so forth, just, just to see the monument. monument. I did it, I did and, and I was not at all disappointed. disappointed. You could look, look at it and think what you want. I think it's very nautical. Okay, you could walk in and through it. This one is an African burial ground. This is I went looking for my pictures, and this is the best I could find. I realize, I realize when you're when doing, doing this thing, you spend too much time, time looking, looking that you don't have the time to step back and take the pictures. pictures. This, is this is not the best, best picture of it because it actually it goes, it goes down, down into the ground. ground. At, that At that site, site be, um, it, was it was the burial, burial ground for enslaved, enslaved people, people who had been brought, brought to New York and died on the ships. ships. So, they so they brought them and they buried, buried them there. And this site was, was actually discovered, discovered when, when a federal, federal building, building was about, about to be built. built. There's a it's big, big um, commotion that, that came up came around the site. And eventually had to be made into a burial ground. And the building was taken on part of the site. And this was preserved. This, this one, one now, we're going, going to the Caribbean. Caribbean. I actually noticed notice that there's a big difference with Caribbean, Caribbean monuments. monuments. This, this is, is coffee. coffee. It's supposed, it's supposed to, be to be the emancipation, emancipation monument in Guyana. In Guyana. But for but some for reason, some reason it is, it is coffee. coffee. Coffee is supposed, is supposed to, well, coffee, coffee was the leader of a rebellion in 1763 in, in, in Guyana. Guyana. And, and um, um, he's, he's a national, national hero. hero. When, this when this was commissioned, was commissioned it was just an emancipation, emancipation monument. monument. But, it but it became coffee. coffee. Social, Social memory. memory. Collective, Collective memory. How, how people, people decide, decide to come together to identify things. With things, things, sorry. This, this one, one is Prince Class. Um, he, was um, he was supposed to have been, to have been um, the, the um, leader, um, leader in a conspiracy, conspiracy to um, break down um, slavery in Antigua. Antigua. Not, not a conspiracy, conspiracy not, not a rebellion. rebellion. Okay. okay. Bossa, Bossa in Barbados. In Barbados. Another, Another one. one. I'm sure I'm you've seen a trend with the monuments. The agenda. To say no. Okay. okay, all right, all right. And, and this is, is in Barbados. Barbados. Again, this is this the Bustle Monument, monument but, the but the official, official, official name is actually the Emancipation, emancipation monument. monument. When it was when being, it was being built, built, there was there no was talk of Bussa. But, but as time went on, it became Bussa. And, and when you speak of Bussa today, everybody knows you're talking about this monument. Bussa was also supposed to be the one who led or started this 1816 rebellion in Barbados. Dominica, it's a new one, it's about 19, sorry, 2013, Negmawa. This is, this supposed, is supposed to be, to be a representation, a representation of, of a maroon. maroon. Again, Again, it's gendered. Gender. Even, Even if very, very often, often in Jamaica, Jamaica and sorry, sorry, in Dominica, in Dominica a, lot a lot of the maroon, maroon leaders, leaders were actually, were actually women. women. Okay, okay, the clarion call, call, the conch shell, shell is being blown, blown here. here. Martinique. Martinique. <laughs> This one's from the 1980s or early 90s. Uh, this, these figures are actually facing the sea where uh, a slave ship actually sank and all the slaves on it died. So this is a memo this was actually a memorial for that, that event. This one, the first the, the picture you saw with the boat and the cane, Laura Facey, she was the one who designed, who designed this. It's, it's quite a piece. Definitely quite a piece. Um, Visually, visually and otherwise. And otherwise. Um, this, this is Redemption, redemption Song. song. And, and people, people are asking, asking what, what about this is redemption? redemption. You, have you have two, two naked, naked people, people looking up at the sky, sky in a pool of water. water. And, and this, the, the, the discussion on it went, went um, um, very far, far up to a point, point where even where academic, academic, um, academic um, articles, articles, what's, what's being talked about is the size of genitalia and the human form. Okay. okay, now, now to, to St. Lucia, Lucia and my, my signpost. Sign I borrowed the work of um, Holbrox, a French a um, philosopher, philosopher, a sociologist, to try to, try to map out, out how I'm going, going to do, to do this. this. And, and he sought a paradigm, paradigm shift, shift in the field of memory studies, studies because before, before that, that it had been something dominated by, by psychologists and psych psychiatrists. And psychiatrists. He placed, he placed memory, memory within, within the society, society because, because before, before that, that memory, memory was a domain, domain of the individual. Of the individual. He, he argued that the wider society, society is the source of memories of its individual members. members. 
He framed remembering as a social activity, something that's active that people do. A social, a social activity, activity in which in members, members of the society, of the society or, the group, or the group, remember, remember together, together and rely on each other for their memories. memories. That, that seems, seems obvious, obvious to us, to us now, now, but back, back then, then it, it wasn't. wasn't. According, According to Hobbes, it is in society, society that people normally acquire memories. memories. And if, and if we think, think about, about ourselves, ourselves, this is exactly, exactly true. true. A, lot a lot of people actually believe, believe that, that they remember. remember. The, the truth, truth is, people is help you remember. remember. Most, Most of what, of what you, you know about yourself, yourself you weren't there when it happened. happened. Somebody, Somebody told, told you. you. It, is it is also in society that people recall, recognize, and localize their memories. The memories of individuals come to the aid of others in the society. He argued that when we are forced to remember, it is in response to the inquiry from, from another, another member, member of our group, of our, group our society. society. He, concludes he concludes that memory, memory is collective and that, and that remembering, remembering is a social, social activity in which members of the society, of the society all participate. participate. Remembering, remembering is an act of act reconstruction, reconstruction of the past based, based on the on framework and infrastructure and provided, provided by the by society. The society. This, suggests this suggests that memory without, without reference points, points provided, provided by the society or the group in which one is a member has very little meaning for the individual, for the individual without, without that, that infrastructure. infrastructure. For, for Hobbes, this, this framework, framework is the, is instrument, the instrument which enables, enables reconstruction the reconstruction of the past, of the past according, according to the to needs, needs of the present. And I need to stress, stress that. that. We remember, we remember not, because not because the past is the past, we remember because of the present. The present. It, is it is something, something necessary, necessary for us at that specific time. time. That, that makes it very, very important. important. The, social the social memory aids in the reconstruction, in the reconstruction of the past, past in accordance with the, with the predominant, predominant thought of, of the present. present. Somebody, Somebody has, has to guide it. Somebody, Somebody has to say what should be remembered. remembered. He argues, he argues that, that the past, past is remembered to serve the needs of the present. The present. That's, That's why, why history, history is so important. Is so important. He, compares he compares memory, memory build, him, memory, memory sorry, to building blocks which are constantly reused, and, 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 and that, that now, now opens, opens the possibility, possibility that, that memory is never, never constant, constant and can, and can be, be constructed, constructed and, reconstructed and reconstructed and put to different, different uses at different, different times, times, the same memory. memory. What is important is that memory can be projected deep into the past, not, Not the, use the use of, of it. it. Sorry. Sorry. Deep into Deep the past, into the past so that it, could, it could be used in the present. In the present. As, As such, me, uh, the approach to memory, to memory leaves much, much room for forgetting. forgetting. Because, because if, if you have, you have to, to look, look at certain, certain aspects, aspects of the memory of the memories, for the needs of the, of the, of the of present, present that you pull from the past, you have to forget something. So we're so talking, talking here that, that as much as, as we are very, very actively, actively remembering, remembering, we are, we are also, also actively, actively forgetting. forgetting. I want to I want move, move now, now to memory, memory and, identity. and identity. Look at, Look at the, the work of Gillis. Gillis, Gillis, Gillis argues, argues that identity, identity is based on what, on what is remembered, is remembered. And, this and this in turn, turn is, defined is defined by a specific, specific identity. identity. Memories and identities, however, are not static, but constantly changing as subjective representations or constructions of reality. According to him, what is remembered or forgotten is often determined by power relations because they are very selective and so specific agendas because you want to create a specific identity. And especially in the group, you want a group identity. There has to be a curation of what is remembered. And in that process, you actively have to forget. According, According to Gillis, identity, identity implies relationships. relationships. And in the, and case, in the of case of nation states, states national, national memories, memories are constructed, are constructed according, according to the to national, national needs based, based on the history, the history of that, history of that society. society. He, he argues, argues that commemoration is important, is important in memory creation. creation. What is what remembered is, is, a pro pro is a product sorry, of contestation. So memory and what we remember is never something passive. There's always contestation. And commemoration gives the impression of consensus. Having decided what is memory, we have to commemorate. When everybody participates in the process of commemoration, it legitimizes the memory. And all of us can now share in that memory. Thus, the memory in the nation state is very often appropriate, appropriated by those with power. It's appropriated by the elite. And the and elite, elite memory, memory dominates, dominates time, time and space. space. Time, time is important, but also space, because, because you have you to have insert it into the, the, space, the space, the physical space of the society, of the society attempting, attempting to render all other memories, memories especially, especially what I call popular, popular memory, memory, that of the Malawi, that, that of the average, average person. person. It, has it has to be to checked. checked. And, and if we have to take it to its logical conclusion, that popular memory has to be forgotten. 
The elite, the elite defined boundaries, boundaries of memory, memory and commemoration, and it is the tool to manage and maintain them. Now, when I'm looking at the monument, I'm seeing the monument here as one of those ways of checking memory and creating boundaries by inserting it in the physical space. Hosbaum is now who I'm going to use here because Hosbaum spoke about what is invented for national identity and so on. Invented traditions. He uses the term invented traditions to refer to traditions actually invented, constructed, and formally instituted, and those emerging in a less traceable manner. He defines invented traditions as, and I quote, a set, a set of practices, of practices normally governed, governed by overtly or tacitly, tacitly accepted, accepted rules and of a ritual and symbolic nature. nature. There are rules. It doesn't, it doesn't just happen. happen. It's, not it's not magic. magic. Because, because they're, they're trying, trying to inculcate specific, specific values and norms of behavior through, through repetition, repetition, which, which automatically, automatically implies continuity, continuity of the past, because, because you have, have to connect and base the present in the past. So whoever, so whoever can choose, choose which past, past has a control of what, what is supposed to be remembered. What is remembered, what is remembered to him does not does have to be from antiquity. From antiquity. In, fact, In fact, you can you actually invent, invent history to justify, to justify what, you're, what doing, you're doing, to help, to help people believe, believe a, specific a specific thing is part, part of their identity. identity. But, but it has, it to, has be to be useful, useful in, the in the present. If it's not useful, you will not get anyone to buy into it. This study is concerned, concerned with moralization, with moralization of, a of a very traumatic, traumatic event, event, the slavery, slavery and the transatlantic, transatlantic slave trade. trade. One, of, One the of the most studied, studied traumatic, traumatic events, events is the systemic, systematic, systematic sorry, extermination, extermination of Jews, Jews which, which some, some refer to as the Holocaust. The Holocaust. I decided, I decided that, that one, of one of the biggest, the biggest studies, studies would have, have to be the basis, the basis for my study. study. And, and a man named James Young, Young in, a in a seminal piece he called The Texture of Memory, memory explores this, this process, process in the creation of monuments, monuments for the Holocaust. For the Holocaust. And, and like, like what I did, you see what I did, what I did here. here. He, he was, was interested, interested in how in monuments, monuments were built in Europe, Europe Israel, Israel, and the United, United States. States. I was interested in how monuments were made in Africa, the Caribbean, and the USA. I tried, I tried Europe, Europe but, but it had already, already been um, studied, studied to the extent that I would not be adding anything to, um, to the conversation. conversation. Europe, Europe is where is the Holocaust, Holocaust took place. place. Israel, Israel is where people, people escaped to. to. The, USA, the USA, the home, the home of freedom, freedom, the land of the home, the home of the free, free and the land of the brave. brave. A, national a national myth of, of liberation and freedom, and freedom was the was perfect place to allow people who had been oppressed in such a way to come and express their freedom. Every single example has a different political context. The Jewish state, the land of freedom, the place where the killing took place. The killings took place. For me, Africa, where people were caught, the Caribbean, where people were forced to work, and North America, where people were forced to work. But the difference is the political context. In the USA, where I did my study, the people of African descent are a minority. In the Caribbean, the people of African descent are the majority. So the context here is a little different. Um, can somebody give me an indication how I'm doing for time? Young argues that the prevailing ideology of the society, which is commissioning the monuments, impacts on the process and the method itself. He also, he also shows how political, political ethos, ethos in the specific, in the specific societies, societies impacts on that, on that process. process. The needs, the needs of the society, of the society will determine what, is, what going is going to be memorialized, memorialized and as a result placed in the public. In the public. My, My study, study must, must, as a result, look at, look at how, how monuments, monuments are made and how they are instituted or placed in the society, in the society, sorry, in the public space. For that, I turn to a man I love and people in here who know my work would be disappointed if I didn't bring him up. up. Michel, Michel Roth Trujillo, Trujillo, a very, a very powerful, powerful Haitian, Haitian thinker. thinker. Trujillo's, Trujillo's book, and I'll give you a short story, story if I have the time, time I started in an archaeology, archaeology theory, theory class, class one, one morning, morning, morning in the winter. In the winter the class started at 7, 7 o'clock. It wasn't it was very pleasant. pleasant. I was, I was late. late. When I walked when I in, I sat, sat down. down the, the, the professor actually made the issue of pointing out the West Indian who was late because he's a West Indian. That's the first thing I remember. I sat in a class, and one of the pioneers of African archaeology came into the class, and he was speaking about um, his work. And when they told him where I was from, he said, oh, so you must be familiar with silence in the past. It wasn't too long ago that I had finished my B.E., so I knew. 
All right. All right. And then and he then said, he Michel Roth Trujillo. Trujillo. I had no I idea who the man was. was. I was I so was embarrassed. So embarrassed. That, that while the class, the class was going, was going on, on, I ordered the book on Amazon. Amazon. With, With Amazon, Amazon Prime, Prime, it was there the following day. And by the by weekend, weekend, I already I finished, finished reading the book. book. Ruhio was interested, interested in how power, how power actually, actually determines, determines what, what is remembered. Is remembered. And, he and he used an example, example a, very a very powerful, powerful example, example, where a where monument, monument is used to do the silencing. The monument, those of you familiar with Haiti, is San Susi. San Susi is, is a very, a very big, big citadel, citadel and it's actually, actually a UNESCO, a UNESCO heritage, heritage site. site. But, but there, there, there was, was another, another San Susi. San Susi was, was an African-born African general, general who was posing a threat, threat to the to emperor at the time, time. Henri Christophe. Christophe, Christophe had, to had to solve his problem, problem. So, so he killed he him, him. And, and he immediately began, began to build San Susi. The monument San Susi has ensured that, that people, people don't, don't remember, remember the man, the man that, that Christoph, Christoph killed. killed. And, here's and here's why. why. The Haitian, the, the, now, the, the, narrative, the narrative of the Haitian, of the Haitian, Haitian Revolution, Revolution is one, is one where, where a group, a group of, people of people came together, together fought, fought, and won. And won. If you start talking about, about people fighting, fighting among, among themselves, themselves, it doesn't, it doesn't fit, fit the national, the national um, um, historical narrative. So while Christoph did the killing and did the building, Haiti becomes complicit. By making, By making this citadel, citadel a huge, a huge monument, monument to the Haitian Revolution. Revolution. So, now, so now, I argue, I argue the citadel, citadel sits, sits on top, top of San Susi, ensuring, ensuring that, that people forget that San Susi was actually involved, was actually involved in the process. In the process. Now, now, this is, is where I'm, I'm going, going, I'm going, going to, to um, 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 I could not, I could see, not see the, the, the time. The time so, so. Okay. okay, 15 to go. To go. Okay, okay, I need to hurry here. All right. All right. The next, the next person, person I want to, in, um, I want I want to employ, employ is a, man, a, woman, a lady named Laura, Laura James Smith. Smith. I will not I will go into detail because I need to finish, finish this thing. thing. Smith, Smith says, says basically that when, that when we look at heritage, heritage, heritage everyone, everyone thinks, thinks about heritage, heritage as something that is normal and natural. But heritage is not. It is specific and it is created. And a group of people are responsible for doing it. She calls it the authorized, authorized heritage discourse. And here's why. The people who choose heritage are experts. National experts, international experts, working for large organizations, which I will not name here. These people claim what heritage is, label things as heritage, and because they are the experts, we accept it. She says that it's the authorized heritage discourse. Again, people choosing, and because these people have a specific background, they are actually going to choose to remember things that are in their favor, the elite. All right, let's move now. The artifact. the artifact. Ten minutes. Ten minutes. My, My artifact, artifact here, here is this, is this monument. monument. It's a monument, monument created by, by um, obviously, obviously Ricky George. George. I'm, sorry I'm sorry I have to use this because, because I, got I got this from this Ricky, from Ricky when, when I spoke with him, with him and, and I, I sent a very congenial email, email because I was supposed to present something, something in York, York where, where I studied. I wanted a nice, clear picture and Ricky sent me the same thing. All right, so this is our artifact. As you can see, it's a male figure. Surprise, surprise, surprise. surprise. This, individual this individual is a specific pose saying a specific, specific thing. thing. Now, now I, will I will stop here and I will look, look at it and not lead you anymore, anymore because, because you will judge what, what I'm, I'm going to say based on what you, what you see. Because, because the, monument the, monument the monument is a very, very, very um, strange, strange thing. thing. The, the artist creates, creates it. it. He, knows he knows what he wants you to see, but very often the people looking at it come out with what they want. So, so you come, you come up with what, with what you want, you want here. here. This, this monument is supposed, is supposed to memorialize the Battle of 1796. 1796. These, These people, people were 2,000, 2000 in number. number. They, they were, were actually fighting, fighting to maintain the freedom. freedom. They, they fought, fought 12,000 12, British, British soldiers. soldiers. Oh, when, I when I presented, presented this to my to panel, panel, my supervisor, my supervisor looked at me, are you sure, Winston? Are you, Are you sure? sure? And I immediately, I immediately because the expert, the expert said that, said I wasn't, I wasn't sure. sure. I went digging, I, I, eventually, I was able I was to say yes. yes. There was, was 2,000 versus 12,000. 12, Who, Who is, is making, making the memory? memory? We must, we remember, must remember, 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 sorry. sorry. However, However artifacts, artifacts while created, created by someone, by someone because, because Ricky George's wood, wood. The craftsman. the craftsman. It is it very, is very often, often the product, product of a larger society, society which, which is informing, informing the creative, creative process. process. Who's, Who's helping, helping him? St. Lucia National, National Trust. Trust. 
and a very, very unique individual, a man named Len Witt. Len Witt, when I began to step back from what I had, and I began to see this man, I hadn't seen him before. He was there all in all of the documents, I didn't see him. When I began to see him, things began to gel. In 1997, National Trust had developed a major campaign to build this monument, a monument to 2,000 people. I'm saying the number because when you just juxtapose it to 12,000, you understand. You know where we're going with this? These are national heroes. Remember, memory creation, and we're creating identities which everybody can access. He started the campaign in 1996 as an individual, but by 1997, National Trust becomes involved. Wit, wit is, is not, not a natural born solution. solution. Wit, wit is actually a British, British expat. expat. I will not I will be politically, politically correct. correct. I will. He, he was a, a white, white British, British expat. expat. He, was he was pushing, pushing for the creation of a monument, of a monument to people who thought was not, he thought were national, national heroes. Wit, wit in the process, process began to do things that for me were mind-boggling. Mind -boggling. I'm, I'm reading documents, reading documents and newspaper articles. articles. I'm, I'm sure, sure I may have read, read at, the at the time they were, they were written. written. But, with but with different, different eyes, eyes, I'm seeing things I've never seen before. before. Wit, wit begins, begins to do what, what all of my um, theorists had, had um, been talking about. These people, wit specifically, began to project St. Lucia as a nation into 1796. Using, using the history, history to justify, justify what he's, what he's trying, trying to do. do. They're national, national heroes. heroes. I, found I found documents where Wit is quarreling literally in the document, document saying that St. Lucia is not interested in the history. history. These, These people, politicians, politicians are not interested in the history. history. He has spoken to so many of them and nobody was taking him on. But he moves on and starts his own process. Wit starts something called the Pride, the Walk of Pride. It happened, it happened in, in I think, 13th, 13th um, December, um, December 1996, 1996, where, where students, students actually followed the trail that was taken, taken by the British, British as they fought into, into the country, the country against, against those, those people. people. They start they where we now have um, Plantation House in Capistate. State. They, go they go all the way, way through, through and end up at Mount Fortune. Fortune. What is remembered? What is remembered? The 2000, 2000 people. people. Fort Charlotte, Charlotte, the brigands, the brigands what's, what's, more, what's more important, important is that is these that people, people fought against, against slavery. slavery. Their resistance. But, but when you look at the conversation, conversation no, no one says slavery. slavery. It, is it is resistance. resistance. What, begins what begins to happen? The resistance, resistance they project resistance, resistance in a way that's anti-colonial because of the British, British invasion. invasion. Very, very, very convenient. convenient. No. no. How does the monument come about? They start actually a competition. And people, and people are supposed, are supposed to, submit to submit sketches, sketches. And, this and this sketch actually, actually won. won. You see you a see difference between this and the, and one, the one before. before. Remember, Remember what the what monument, monument is trying to say. To I, in, an in an interview with a very, very humorous, humorous person, person, I asked, I asked what, was what was the problem with this. He said, how could one fight for freedom sitting on their ass? Very powerful words, because we're talking about freedom. From, the, from back. the back. But also, but also look at the, at the weapons. weapons. If I may if I go, go back, back a little. little. You see the big see change? The big change. Okay. 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 I found out the original, original monument, monument, which was which actually installed, installed in 1996, 1996 is this, this block, of block of stone, stone that, that most of us walk past on Sir Arthur Lewis and never pay attention to. Wait was adamant, adamant that something had to be done. done. So, so for this, this for him was a placeholder. Place so, so we can argue that the that monument moved from this to the, to the fighter, fighter sitting on his ass, ass to, to the, the one, one that eventually is placed in the public. In the public. At competition, the full state sanction um, commemoration, commemoration of emancipation was in 1996. Was in 1996. Government money was spent for the first time to commemorate emancipation. emancipation. And, and at, at that, that ceremony, ceremony, something very, very what for me was very, was very strange, strange happened. happened. A prime, a prime minister, minister actually spoke, spoke about slavery and emancipation, emancipation that had never, never been done, done before. before. In that, in that speech, speech, the Prime, Prime Minister, Minister actually, actually did something, did something even more interesting. More interesting. He, required he required that, that in, in all, all of his remembrances, remembrances we, don't we don't remember slavery. slavery. We, we remember, remember the freedom, freedom and the resilience, and the resilience that, was that was the characteristic, characteristic of the St. Lucian. The, the, the main participants, participants again, again, and monument, monument making. making. The identity. the identity. I spoke, I spoke earlier on about Wade actually, actually projecting St. Lucia back, back and said, we know St. Lucia is nine, nine what? what? Independence, Independence was, was in, in yeah. all right, all right, 1979. 1979. This, this man is projecting St. Lucia back, back into, into 1796, almost 200 years. years. Because, because he thinks, he thinks and, he and he states that St. Lucia-ness 
is what these people actually exuded. So they had to be commemorated as national heroes. Powerful forgetting. In all of this I've spoken about, we said, we've seen, sorry, the people are not talking about slavery. Slavery is a traumatic event, and slavery cannot be part of the narrative. The other, the other issue, issue is, is how, how do you actually speak about, about slavery without causing social, social problems? problems. Because, because we have, we have a, very a very diverse population. population. The, the, the other issue is, we are depending, depending on, a, on an industry which is, which is serving predominantly people of European, European descent. descent. One, has one has to be has careful, to be careful how, one how one goes around, around projecting, projecting those types of things. things. So, so, powerful forgetting. forgetting. There's, There's two, two types. types. There's, There's powerful, powerful forgetting and powerful remembering. In powerful forgetting, you, you actually, actually are supposed, supposed to, place to place the traumatic event in context. context. Slavery is part of our history. history. There's, There's lots of other things. things. And, I, and, I, and as I say, I say that, that, I remember, I remember interviewing, interviewing a, a museum, museum professional in another Caribbean, Caribbean island who, who make, make, when, I, when I questioned her about it, she said, slavery is only part of our history. It's not our history. I argue here that it is the foundation of the history. It is what you will, the Big Bang that created what we are today. So in the Caribbean, and St. Lucia, and Lucia at that time, at that time we're looking at powerful, powerful forgetting. forgetting. Why, Why forget? forget? And I, and I mentioned, mentioned it before. before. Because, because of the nature of our society, of our society there, there must be lots of forgetting, forgetting because, because if we if don't we forget, forget, we have, we to, have deal to deal with the, with the issue, issue of, of slavery. Slavery, slavery while, while very, impo a very important part, part of the history, history is not is always convenient to remember. In 1796, the 2,000 fighters who were at war to prevent the invasion of a foreign power were very, very important. important. Remembering, Remembering resistance, resistance to the invasion by, by national, national heroes, heroes is accessible to all St. Lucians. Lucians. They're, not They're not fighting, fighting against slavery. They're fighting, fighting against, against the invasion of a foreign force. force. Every, Every St. Lucian, Lucian can understand, understand that. that. Now, the, now political the political context within which is happening, happening, I have to speed up here because, because the time lords are bearing, bearing down on me. We are, we are talking, talking about, about a time, time period when St. Lucia was in loss of upheaval. I lived through it but didn't realize it until I began to excavate the memory. When you read what's happening in the newspaper, it looks kind of ominous. We're on the edge. The banana wars have started. The banana issues are happening. The strikes are taking place. The prime minister is making speeches that he had never done before. He's on TV sweating. I'm sure you remember the imagery. St. Lucia is actually in chaos. Not just that. The government is 18, 18 years, years into controlling a country, a country but, the but the international situation, situation is proving that the government, the government is impotent. Is impotent. We, could we could not sell our bananas. bananas. We could, we could not, not make decisions, decisions about bananas. bananas. In, in fact, fact, I remember clearly that somebody, that somebody said, said at a meeting, a meeting in, in, um, in, in Lima, Lima the, US the US had come, come to, war to war with about 100 lawyers and the Caribbean had no representatives. St. Lucia was in turmoil. Within that context, we can understand why Len Waite was busy doing what he was doing and why he had to do it. But forgetting was necessary. Okay. Projecting the idea of nation states into the distant past allows for historical narratives which glosses over the more difficult aspects of the history. A monument to resistance provides the boundaries, remember, the markers for remembering, for remembering and the foundation, and the foundation for the projection of a specific national identity. identity. This, this identity is accessible to all, has to be accessible, be accessible to, all. to all. And with and that, that St. Lucia and had a narrative, had a narrative which everybody could access. Could access. This active, active avoidance of the, tra of the trauma, of trauma of slavery is what, is what Paul, Paul Connaughton, Connaughton refers, refers to as repressive erasure. erasure. He, argues he argues that this type of forgetting, of forgetting is employed to deny, to deny the historical rupture, rupture, and that, and that historical, historical rupture we're talking about, about is slavery. slavery. It is an, it is an act, act of the of state, state and is believed, believed to be in the interest of all parties. parties. It is not it necessarily, necessarily negative. negative. Some have argued that with, that with tourism quickly, quickly becoming the most important breadwinner in the Caribbean, Caribbean slavery, slavery heritage, heritage might not be the best product for the industry. For the industry. And, I and I did some, did some research, research on that, that and, it and it manifested, manifested itself, itself where a lot of the tourists, tourists weren't interested, were interested in that. In that. However, However, the type of, of mark um, product, product that we're presenting, present heritage, heritage tourism, tourism, a specific type of client is what we are looking for, and that type of client is actually important in sorry, in authenticity. Connaughton also spoke of forgetting that is, that is constitutive, constitutive in the, in the making, making of a new identity. identity. And I'm, and I'm arguing, arguing here that, that what weight and the National, national Trust, whether they were aware, aware of it or not, were trying, trying to create a national, national identity, identity around, around this, this monument, monument 
which was solution. solution. I have a question here. Was, was this, this inherent, inherent forgetting necessary, necessary to create this identity? identity? Was, was it? It's a question that you have to ask, um, answer, answer for yourself. yourself. We, we have seen the artifact, and, and we have seen that it was created under specific circumstances for specific reasons. reasons. It, it also, also gives us an understanding of the overarching philosophies which governed the society that produced it. The, the monument, monument resistance and resilience, and resilience ignored, ignored the 800-pound 800 800 gorilla of slavery which was in the room and its legacies by trumpeting resistance, resilience, resilience and they look to the future. future. And they look and to the future, the future is not something I'm coining here. here. I found I a number of speeches and presentations made by people involved in the process who, who made sure, sure that we knew, understood that creating a monument, we had to look to the future. In fact, if I can go back, It doesn't happen. 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 Or, or. If I if go I back, back to this, to this image, image, we can, we can talk, talk about, about the movement the from, the from the stone to the man, man sitting, sitting on his, his derriere, derriere to this, this. And, and what it is, is that we're that talking, talking about. about. When, when this, this was presented as the, as the final, final monument, monument there, was there was an official, official who didn't like, like it. it. He thought, he thought that there were too many, many weapons, weapons of war, war on, it. on it. He felt, he felt that the holding of a cannonball was a bit, bit violent. violent. He, actually he actually argued that, that they should be holding, holding a book. A book. <laughs> now, no, you would laugh and say, why would they speak, speak about holding a book? A book. Within, Within the context, context of our of Nobel, Nobel laureate legacy, legacy he was, he talking, was talking about, about an intellectual, intellectual monument, monument, one that, that looked, looked at, at the heroes of St. Lucia, Lucia, heroes which were necessary and, and however, however, very, very present. present. Everybody, Everybody knows, knows about, about those heroes. heroes. So he so felt that, that getting, getting rid of the, the weapons, weapons would actually be a better, a better thing, thing for the for monument. monument. Okay? okay. So, so, so I can now point out certain things, the cannonball, grape shot, a sword, a sword actually which this person, if he were real, would not be wearing. Broken, broken cannon, cannon victory, victory over, over somebody, somebody this is the person, the person who had the cannon, cannon holding, holding what the person would have used, used to actually conquer, conquer you. you. Ladies, Ladies and gentlemen, there's a lot of forgetting going, going on here. First of all, of all there are women. In fact, in fact if you look at plantation, plantation records, records, most, most of, the of the people on the slave plantation, plantation are actually women. women. In the Caribbean, they are forgotten. These sit on top of the women so we don't see them. The other thing is, This, this is a very, is a very heroic, heroic monument. monument. But, but in all of this discussion, discussion everybody, everybody has forgotten, has forgotten that, the that the people who have memorized it actually lost, lost the war. war. They lost they the war. war. And a few and weeks ago, months ago, months ago we, found we found out where, where they, they went, went to. to. A, prison a prison in Portchester. Portchester and, and the archives in that um, museum, museum actually speaks to that. that. And we're and hoping that we could actually excavate that as well and put it up for public consumption. There are actually, actually 2,000 people, people who are, who are who imprisoned there. there. I don't know I don't if, if it was an accident, accident or, not. or not. But, but 2,000 people defended, defended the fort. The fort. So, I so I want to wrap, wrap up, up here by saying that, that the heroic, the heroic monument, monument is actually, is actually very, very much a silencing tool. tool. And I and want I to want ask whether we believe, we believe that it is that necessary, necessary as St. Lucian, who, who want a specific identity, whether it is necessary to do the silencing. I think my, I think time, my is time is up. up. I will I stop, stop here. here. Can I get some help with the lights? Thank, Thank you. you. So, so Dr. Dr. Phil Jones' presentation, presentation is, done, is done, but we, we don't, don't end, end here. here.
We continue with our discussion with Dr. Fulgens. And, and we want to invite one of his former colleagues who has over 30 years of experience. And that's, and that's modest. modest. He, doesn't he doesn't want me, want me to, to, you know, expose, expose his real age. age. But, this but this gentleman, gentleman had, had been teaching at the South of the Community, community College, College since 1988. A lecturer, a lecturer in, in history, history, sociology, sociology and, and political science. science to, to elevate, elevate the discussion. discussion. Our, Our chair, chair refers, refers to him as, as the interlocutor. interlocutor. Please help Please me welcome, welcome Mr. Solomon Adjuman. To the, the table, table where he will engage, engage Mr. Fulgens in discussion and will and also allow uh, the, audience the audience to have an input. input. Let, Let me say to our live online, online audience, audience that, that they, are they are free to, to join in the discussion. discussion. We, will we will read the read questions and comments, and comments um, to, to our, our audience here. here. So, so they, they are also part, part of this discussion, discussion. But, but it will be led by Mr. Solomon Ajuman. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Phil Jones. That was, well, I would say informative, blandly. But then three things I picked up from your talk. Well, three basic themes. Memory, memory, monuments, monuments. Slavery. slavery. Memories, memories in, in the term that memories, memories can, can be used to assert, to assert identities, identities, help the present. present. It, can it can be, be also, also used, used for indoctrination, indoctrination and, and assert, assert dominance, dominance as, as slavery, slavery was made up of different, different groups and they could use different, different collective memories, memories to present, present a different, different picture of what they want society to look at based on the past. The second one was monuments. I found that interesting because as the mistress of ceremony said, I've been working at a place for 30 years, replete with so many monuments, some of which I only came to realize their significance lately. So for example, if I ask people, when they, when what the administration building, which year was it built, they wouldn't, they wouldn't know, know until one day I saw 1904. I happened to be taking students and visitors alike by the Inskelin Monument, and I was telling them the inscription on the canons. And I said this came from the reign of George. Regius George, because I mistook the V for a G until somebody from the University of London told me that's Victoria. <laughs> so monuments need to be interpreted. Monuments need to be defined. But most importantly, I, as a historian, would advocate that what Winston draws to us is that Historians, historians, anthropologists, anthropologists local, local historians, historians should, should act, act as policemen, policemen collect, collect the evidence, evidence. Lawyers, lawyers interpret, interpret the evidence, the evidence and judges and, and make and a decision, decision upon, upon the, evidence the evidence to prevent a balanced view to society. On this on note, I will open up the floor to questions. Okay, my question is a very simple question. The picture you presented of the monument, I've never seen a monument. So my question is, where is this monument? Actually, it was a very interesting um, situation I found myself in because I was looking at monuments and very interesting monuments. And this one monument, which I became very obsessed with, was not in the public space. In my investigation of the, the monument, I found out that there was even more contestation that I actually found in the, in the um, historical record. That the monument existed, it had been completed. I spoke with the one who created it, but it was not being implemented, it was not being installed for specific reasons. Um, I chose not to go into that because. I think, I think I need to finish, I need to finish the work. work. 
I figured I had, had looked at the process, the process and I left, left the monument, monument alone. alone. I, I, somebody sent me pictures, pictures of, a, of something, something in a box. In a box. And, when and when I looked closely, closely, it was the monument. So the monument is in storage. I've a number of rumors about where it's going to be installed. I don't know. But I am sure we're going to see that at some point in time. Um, the, monument the monument is stored, stored at the government, at the government warehouse, warehouse at Masad, Masad and, and the intentions to unveil it this year in Sufre. <laughs> okay, okay, I am shocked, shocked at the place, the place because, because from, from my, my the, research the research I did, I did it, was it was actually supposed, supposed to be on the Mon. Mon. It was, it was part, part of a bigger, bigger his, um, his, um, national, national heroes, heroes park. park. It was supposed, it was supposed to, be to be the monument that initiated, initiated the process of creating, of creating a park for, for national, national heroes. heroes. So, so like, like I, said, I said, the contestation, the contestation continues, continues. And, and I may be lucky, lucky enough to, to exhibit that contestation, contestation to understand how and why, and because, because I think it's very important, important that we that find, we out, find well, out, well, I find out, why, why the monument is not where it was intended and why it ends, ends up in Soufre, a very storied part of St. Lucia. Lucia. But well, um, um, I am I'm sure, sure a few years later we could find out exactly what the process is. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you, Dr. Fulgens, for, for a very interesting, very interesting lecture. lecture. I must I admit, admit, I wish you could have gone on for a bit longer. I found myself quite enraptured by what you were saying. And, and spellbound by, by some, some of the, the images, images you showed and, and the narrative, the narrative around, around it. it. As, As Mr. Argument, Argument just said, said monuments need to be interpreted. Be interpreted. I'd, like I'd like us to, to focus, focus on, on that, that particular, particular theme. theme. When, when you look at a specific individual monument, you're looking at the collective manifestation, manifestation of, of someone's, someone's idea of what, what should be presented, be presented with, with all, all of its manifest. manifest. I'll correct you and say the society's idea. I stand corrected. What I'm what saying, I'm saying is, is, when, when you, have you have a museum, a museum like that, that extensive, extensive one you show, that's the picture of in France, France in Nantes, Nantes. You, you walk, walk through, through it. it, that, that movement, movement does, does something. something. It, allows it allows you to, to be, transported be transported or transport yourself. yourself. So, so I'm, I'm suggesting here that, that having a museum that you could walk through and interpret maybe different stages of the process might allow you to have the, the very, very raw and painful memory that, that needs, needs to be repressed, repressed or forgotten, or forgotten as, as you were saying, saying, and then move and transport yourself through, through the various phases, phases and maybe emerge at a later stage where, like, like the emancipated, you're looking, you're looking to the, the future, future and, and having, having built, built on that, that sorrowful past, past, you could look ahead with some strength. So you see so you the, the monument as a form of reparations then? I want the museum where you, you can, can walk, walk through, through it, it to, to take, take that, that role. Okay, okay. I, I, I deliberately showed several, several types, types of monuments, monuments and, and um, I wanted I to show how Europe, Europe chooses, chooses to remember, to remember. Um, this, this historical, historical event, event. Because, because in Europe, Europe there, is there is no actual, actual statue, statue that you, that you could, could face. face. I think, I think it's, it's a stylistic, stylistic thing, thing, something, something for, the for the region. region. And, I and I also found out that, that in the late early 20th century, 20th century Europe, Europe had discarded, discarded the statue, the statue as, a as a monument. For France, for France and, and Nantes, I, I think it was, it was a, way a way of, of dealing, dealing with the with issue, issue by, by and I, I should say, say the, the creator, creator of, of forcing, forcing the person to face it without actually putting it in their face. By the, By the time I was, I was in there for like 30 minutes, minutes I, needed I needed to get out. Get out. I, needed I needed to get, get out. out. Because, because I was in this oppressive, oppressive space, space with, with music playing, I'm reading, I'm reading text, text, but there's, but there's water, water on, the on the side. I literally, I literally felt, felt like I was in the slave ship. ship. I had to get, I had to get out. out. But, I but I was prepared, I was prepared for, that for that because, because the, monument the monument was not just that specific installation on the banks. You prepared for it almost a quarter mile on the sidewalk with different, different um, um, tiles, tiles with specific, with specific events, events of history, of history and, flags and flags with personalities who are featured in the history of the diaspora, diaspora African diaspora. diaspora. So by the so time, by time you get to this monument, monument, you're very well prepared. Well prepared. It, it was it genius. Was genius. I, mean, I mean, it was, it was really, really, really well done. done. Um, so, so we have we a, a question, question from online, from, um, um, from uh, Francisco Plummer. Plummer. Some, Some of you may know that person. person. Um, the, it, 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 it says, says the, the legacy of forgetting, of forgetting or trying to forget is undoubtedly related to our characteristic way of managing all traumas, traumas not, not just the trauma, trauma of slavery. So what so say you to that, that Dr. Fulgen? I agree absolutely and totally, and I think I tried to imply that, because that's why I spoke about the trauma of the one that's in our face all the time, 
Holocaust and how it's managed. And I think a lot of what we're trying to do and what the scholars are seeing is that it's very, very similar. And here's why. In Europe, there's a small people of population of people of African descent. So there's no need to look at blackness. It is a human being and how the human being was treated. In Africa, it is in your face. It is right there. The darkness, the pain, the trauma is in your face. And here's why. Because, because it is, it is a, a, tourist, a heritage, heritage tourism, tourism site. site. Ghana, Ghana puts itself up as the as home to people, people of African, African descent, descent in the diaspora, diaspora. Even, even if, if no, no one can say definitively where they came, where from. came from. But the, but the myth, myth of home, home is necessary if you, if you could show that the that trauma of slavery, slavery is there. Is there. And, and interestingly, interestingly enough, Ghana, Ghana ended, ended slavery in 1928. Ghana, Ghana doesn't talk about Ghanaian slavery. Ghana, Ghana is busy, busy pushing, pushing diasporic, diasporic slavery because, because there's, there's money, money to be made. To be made. In, the, In Caribbean, the Caribbean, you see the, the creation of national, of national heroes, heroes mythical, mythical figures. figures. Very, very often, often they, are they are of Africa. They are African, African born. born. It's very, very interesting. interesting. Is the, the African, African man, man who has to free us, us. The national, national hero. hero. It's, it's always, always a man. man. There are very, very few monuments. I think, I think um, Nanny in Jamaica. And if you look at Nanny, Nanny is a man in a dress. The characteristics, the characteristics that they give for Nanny, Nanny is a man in a dress. dress. So, so it has, has to be masculine. Be masculine. And, and in St. Lucia, Lucia, when, when um, the issue, issue I, I, I looked at the notes from, from a meeting, meeting, when the when issue of the gender, gender nature, 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 nature of the monument came up, came up the, artists the artists had a very brilliant response. He said, basically, there's so much money to go around. How can I do this? But we can argue, and it's not a critique of the artist, a critique of the process. We can argue that a monument could have been made that was not gendered at all. But, but the, the artist, artist was, was actually, actually influenced, influenced by a by book a called, a book called a pamphlet written by um, Len Wade called St. Lucia the Brave, Brave where the national heroes of that 1796 battle were pushed. And, and I, I, think, I think, having, having read, read that, that and spoken, spoken to the people, to the people um, I think I the think artists have no choice but to put a man in place. place. Now, now, I'm saying this. We have, and I know I will be chastised for saying that. But as but an archaeologist, archaeologist, I have, I to, have pay to pay attention, attention to, it. to it. In the, In the landscape, landscape of St. Lucia, Lucia, female slave heroes, heroes are installed in the landscape. landscape. Piton Flor, Flor Bois Gaillard, is in the landscape. Now, now somebody, somebody will tell, will tell me, and, and okay, okay, let me let come straight out here. here. Mark, Mark will tell me that's, that's probably mythical, mythical because, because it is an extensive, extensive research. He has not found it. But as an archaeologist, and understanding social memory, there's a reason why a mountain is called that. So we need, so we need to, to investigate, investigate that. that. So, so as, as much as, as the elite, elite is, is putting, putting forward a man, man the, people the people have already, already done it in the, the landscape. landscape. Okay, it's, um, I, was I was itching to ask a question, question myself, myself, which is directly, which is directly related, related to what, to what you were saying. saying. And since, since nobody, nobody else has raised their hand, I'm going to do it. In terms of that, just a few weeks ago, we had a lecture delivered by a scholar, Professor Claire Alexander, I think her name was. And she was advocating for Flor Gaia becoming a St. Lucian monument. And of course, the issue of myth came up. But I find it interesting because your entire presentation is talking about the way the facts we look at are actually contrived or, or there's some element of, of invention in it. So in curation. So, so, in, so in terms of the, 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 the boundary between myth and fact, after your presentation, that boundary is, is, is blurry right now. So I'm wondering whether myth could still be put up with the argument you made, whether the mythical the nature of Flor Bois um, could, could still be put, put up, put up as, as a reason for not, not erecting, erecting the monument when, when the erection of the monument itself is verging on the mythical in, in terms of, of, of what it's drawing, drawing upon. upon. I, will res I will respond to that in a very long and drawn out way. I'm not sure if it will satisfy you. When I was done doing all of this research, something struck me. That I was as biased as the elite that I was looking at. I was looking for monuments. And all, and all I looked for were the traditional, traditional monuments. monuments. I, was I was fully aware, aware that there that was the um, floor in the landscape, in the landscape but, I but I chose to ignore it because, because I had to finish, finish the paper. The paper. Um, um, my, my thing, thing is, is the elite, elite do what the elite want to do. And it's, and it's necessary, necessary to do it because, because, because there's a specific, specific identity, identity that they need us to access, that they need the society to access. The people who are doing what I call the popular memory are already, already doing, doing it, it and I've already, already done, it. done it. I looked I at, at a specific, specific aspect, aspect of, of it. it. 
I could have looked at other ways in which people memorialize and actually installed monuments, their old monuments, not statues, not buildings. It's in the space. It's in the music. And I will go as far as jumping off a cliff here and say, when I hear Kuduro music and the beat of it, I hear a monument. Because, because when, when I first heard it, I was wondering how them young boys, boys pardon me for using the vernacular, vernacular, know about, about solo music. music. I, don't I don't know if they're aware of it. it. I don't know I if they understand, they understand it. it. But, but I, I believe that I was, I was looking, looking for, for elite, elite monuments. monuments. And that's, and that's the conclusion I've come to, and that's why I'm going to leave my response to that. Good evening, Dr. Fulgens. I'm glad with the last question that Lucien has, has come, come up, up with, with. Um, because, because I was, I was just, just thinking, thinking concerning a point that, that you mentioned when, when you spoke, spoke about, about our heritage, heritage. and, and to, to me it seemed, seemed like, like you left, left it kind, it kind of, of hanging, hanging. Because, because you sort of made mention, mention of that, that the elite, the elite as you just mentioned there, they are the ones kind of promoting and leading in, in what, what they choose, choose to be our, our heritage. heritage. So, so I do I not know if you just want, want to touch, touch a, little a little more on this aspect. aspect. Please. Please. Well, I, well, I think, think my response to the previous question, question um, um, dealt, dealt with that. that. But, but um, I'll, I'll stick with the reference. I left, I left a lot out. out. I didn't read about 10 pages here. When I saw the 15 minute sign, I had to speed up and because, because I, I, I wrote the paper, I remember a lot of it, but there's a lot that's still there. While I'm remembering, I'm actually, I actually a lot of forgetting. Um, I believe that the heritage that is labeled is the authorized heritage. You know what the experts decide is heritage. But I think people live and practice heritage all of the time. It's the academics and the experts who label specific things heritage and make them into... Um, there's an author I could, I could have used. He spoke about... Um, um, the difference, the difference between, between custom, custom and heritage, and heritage. Custom, custom, sorry, and tradition. tradition. And I, I had gotten into a lot of trouble, trouble by speaking, speaking about, about the FRS. FRS. <laughs> All right, All right. I, don't, I, I won't jump off that cliff. cliff. Um, um, are we are looking we at, 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 the, the, the point I'm trying to make here, here without getting into trouble, is that there's tradition and there's custom. Tradition is what people do, custom is what people are told is what, is they, what are. they are. Um, I'm going to do, do it. <laughs> La Rose, for example, <laughs> is tradition. It's tradition. I, say I say it is custom. custom. When, when people, people stopped, stopped doing La Rose, La Rose for the for reasons, reasons La Rose was invented, invented. sorry, at La Marguerite, there are people in blue inside, inside, inside here. here. When, when there's two flower festivals, festivals Stop being done, done for the, for the reasons, reasons that they were invented. invented. I, believe I believe they stopped, they stopped being tradition, tradition and, they and they became custom. custom. Because, because what, what we, we have, have now, now <laughs> is custom, custom in a museum, in a museum <laughs> which does not, does not allow for, for the, tradition the tradition to progress, to progress as it as has. It has. <laughs> Before, Before we, 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 we take, take um, uh, we have another in-house in -house question. I'll just give an online, online um, and then and I'll go to the in-house in question. Mr. Ajman, were you about, were you about to ask the question yourself, yourself as well? As well? It was actually, actually a very short, short one. one. I was, I was wondering, wondering why Bido didn't show up in his presentation. Okay, Bido, the one by the Constitution Park. Okay, let me just see the online one and you'll answer both. The person's name online is Olaf Gargamel. I don't know if that's their real name, but it says, I wonder whether Dr. Fulgens is inclined. Sorry? I wonder if, I wonder whether Dr. Fulgens is inclined to draw parallels with the removal of monuments of the American Civil War generals and the cleansing of the pain of slavery via forgetfulness in the U.S. All right, um, um, I'll, take I'll take the, the, the one, one for the U.S. US monuments first. first. Um, I, have I have made the, made the point that, that memory is basically the scaffolding, the foundation, foundation around, which around which people build identities. identities. Um, um, national, national narratives are very different, different from, from narratives of specific groups. groups. African Americans are a minority, minority in the society, in the society and, and the monuments, monuments are painful. painful. I, saw I saw monuments being torn down as someone who spent about five years studying monuments. I was a little perplexed, and here's why. The monument is a marker in the soil. It reminds, it reminds people, people of the trauma. trauma. But, but erasing, erasing the monument, the monument 
really is erasing history. Because, because the monument was installed for a specific reason. reason. And if we forget that reason, we forget why we did what we did. So someone asked me on Twitter, what do you think of this Twitter say, well, when I was studying monuments? And my response was simple. I don't believe in taking down monuments. I believe in counter monuments. Counter monuments. And when I found out that the Freedom Monument was going to be placed on the Mon, I was very, very happy. Because studying monuments in St. Lucia, I looked at every single monument in the country. And they were all in the north. In Skilling Monument, the first monument put up in St. Lucia ever, 1930 something. Who put it up? People from the same regiment. They came to memorialize the people. And what's shocking, of course, that hit me like a brick when I was writing, because I didn't realize when I, what I was doing. I had the picture in front of me. I didn't see it. The Inskilling Monument was on the highest point on the moon. It's actually the highest point on Fort Fort Charlotte, Mon Fortune. They took the highest spot. And the people who are in the country since 1912, after 1936, when it was put up, never saw the need to put up a counter monument. So for me, this freedom monument was now a counter monument. If you look at what I'm saying, you think, oh, let's tear down Inskilling. No, leave the Inskilling monument there and put a counter monument. So I hope that answers the online question. Uh, um, I said a while ago, I looked at all monuments in Saint Lucia, and I left this out here because I had only 45 minutes. It would take me another um, three hours to look at the entire Saint Lucian process. Because when I began to look at monuments in Saint Lucia, I began to see a definite narrative. When I looked at um, Bido and um, Bolivar in Constitution Park, which again I never saw because the way it was hidden, but when I found out about them, began to look into them, and I know Mr. Williams is here, and Bido is one of his babies. Um, a lot, a of, the lot of the narrative around it was actually about, about freedom. freedom. It, was it was interesting. interesting. The, the Prime, Prime Minister of St. Lucia at the time spoke about heroes, heroes of freedom and so on. And I was I shocked. shocked. But St. Lucia had no heroes, heroes at all. And here and we were actually, actually can we can say, say co-opting co a hero? A hero? And a, and a hero, hero for freedom. For freedom. And, as and as we move, move along, along and men, men again, again. We, found, we found, I found in Castries a number of other men who were national heroes. National, National heroes, heroes for specific, specific reasons. reasons. Um, um, men who had qualities, qualities that were that touted. touted. I found, I found every, every speech at every unveiling, unveiling and everyone, and everyone spoke, spoke about national, national qualities. qualities. So there was a so definite, definite attempt to create a national solution identity. identity. And I think, and I think the icing, icing on the cake would have been the Freedom, freedom monument. monument. The resilience, the resilience looking, looking forward to the future. future. Put down Put the down sword, pick up the book kind of thing. All right, let me, can I sit down? All right. The yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, Mr. Wake was, was a Methodist. He was white. white. He was married he to a Sanusian. When, when he organized, organized that, that that walk of pride to go, to go to the bush, bush. I, was I was not the full, full member of the Council of Trust. But what, but what I, tried I tried to organize, to organize was, was to get some of the boys in the country to get the bamboo cannons. To make a make joke of the whole thing. thing. Because, because I, didn't I didn't like, like the, whole the whole process of, of the, <laughs> the English coming, coming to re-enslave re us, us, and you're calling call that, that a walk of pride. pride. All right. All right. We, we had, had several, several committees. committees. We, we had, had a Heroes Day, a Heroes Park, and an Independence Day, and we had a uh, yeah, Heroes Monument. But, but it, started it started off with trying to get, to get a monument, monument for, those for those what they call the brigands. I don't, I don't like to use the word brigands, brigands. I use guerrillas. A, a monument to those people who had fought, fought against, against the British, British to re-establish re a slavery that had been imposed or had been, had been granted, granted by the by French. The French. So, so that in this monument, monument is the regiment that helped to enslave us. us. All right, all right. So, so I was I trying to push to have, to have a monument. They said, put it in Park. Park. I said, no, no you, have you have to put it on the biggest, biggest highest, highest point, point where the biggest, biggest part, part of the battle, battle took place. place. You mentioned about 2,000 soldiers. soldiers. <laughs> there were actually, I've seen, I've seen numbers, numbers between 5,000 5, and 7,000 7, soldiers, soldiers who were raised from ex-slaves, from the Maroons, from the Great War that went on before. So of those 2,000 who marched out, and what's, and what's interesting, interesting they, were they were given, given honors, honors of, of war, war by, by the, the British. British. 
They were allowed to march out with their drums beating and their flags flying before laying down their arms. Now, that was really incredible, because you don't do that. The guy in the American Revolution, he didn't have the honors of war. You mentioned about the prisoners. The 2,000 guys, they were in prison in a medieval castle in England. In July, an exhibition has been started off by the English Heritage Trust. And that is going to be a permanent exhibition. Of the 2,000 slaves, of the 2,000 prisoners, most of them were sent to There were just a handful of people from God, but most of them were sent They were caught here. We sent soldiers to fight in St. Vincent. They were also captured and imprisoned and went to England. So the idea of the monument is to put one to honor those soldiers whom the British should honor. We had, I was on several discovery trips. So, so we decided, decided they decided we're going to have, have a monument, monument built. The monument, the monument was built. built I, don't I don't know whether know who chose it because, because you know you see monuments, monuments with people sitting down, down and you know, am I not a man and a brother? So, so I walk I into the meeting, meeting and, I and I see this, this sketch, the first sketch you saw. I was furious. I said, you're telling me a monument to resistance? I didn't have a man sitting on his ass. <laughs> so, so, I said, that's not what happened. happened. The guys the rose up, they took their cutlasses and they took their torches and they burned the place down, set the 11 towns and villages burned, and you have this guy sitting on the backside. So, they withdrew that sketch and they got another sketch. So that so one that comes, comes in, you know, the guy has a torch in his hand, he has a cutlass in his hand, boy, he put in torch on and cutlass with. Went, went back to the to officials. officials. The, the Labour Party, Party was in power. power. They, they see the, the torch, the flambeau there. No, 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 we don't want this money. money. <laughs> back to the drawing board. So the so monument the you saw there was the third monument to this, this whole, whole thing, thing that started, started first as honoring the soldiers. But, but what was said was, no, we won't have to the brigands or the guerrillas. We'll have it to emancipation. So it became, it evolved into an emancipation. That, that monument has been built. I an awful lot of money. It was first a trust project. It went to a CDF project. And that, and that monument, monument has, has been, been built, built about, about eight years, years at least. least. I tried to found it. They said it was a comprehensive school. They told me it was in the government warehouses. So they say, I have looked for it. I've given up on that. But that monument is built there somewhere. And I think it's a reflection. We don't teach our history. We build our monuments. We name them. It's a sad reflection on the people who govern us. I'm very sorry about that. Oh, Mr. Oh, Williams, Mr. Williams, thank, thank you very, very much. So, Dr. Dr. Williams, thank you very much, because, because you actually, actually reinforced everything, everything I was saying. saying. What, you, what actually you actually pointed out, that there was, was even, even more, more contestation than I actually, actually thought. thought. Um, um, I, came, I, came I came across, across um, talk of, of the flambeau, but, but I, I could not find a sketch. sketch. So, because, so because, because I had no documentary evidence, I decided to leave it out in the process. All right, go ahead. Uh, Dr. Phil Jones, it sort of occurred to me that um, in looking at the monuments, there seems to be like the experience of the one in Nantes, which seems fairly documentary, say a cell, something that was actually used during in slavery. On the other hand, we're seeing also the monuments that are artistic creations. In my, in my thinking, thinking, I think, I think that, that you, know, you know, there, there, is, there, there ought, ought to be an aspect, aspect of memory that's, that's accurate, accurate to, guide to guide us in how we live going, going forward. forward. Now, now, my, my question, question to you is, is do, you do you think, think that, that creating monuments as purely artistic, artistic creations, creations as, opposed as opposed to something, something representative and documentary like, like a cell or an actual, actual slave ship or something, or something so. so. Do you, do you think, think there's the danger, danger that it can, can actually corrupt, corrupt that, that, act, that, that aspect, aspect of memory over time, time that, that ought to be accurate, accurate because, because of the freedom, freedom associated with artistic, with artistic creation? creation. 
I think there's a danger with any type of monument because of what the monument does. It always sits on somebody's memory. Always, no matter what it is that you do. In Nantes, it was not about slavery. It was about France's rule in abolition of slavery. In the, in the UK, UK the, International the International Slavery, Slavery Museum, Museum where, where the faces the on the boat with the, on, on the canes with, with the people in it, that, that, that slavery, slavery museum, museum was in the basement, in the basement of, the of the building. And when the people, when the people of African descent in, in, in the UK, UK started to rile up and, rile up and say, how come they are part of the historical, historical narrative as well? They're not in there. The museum moved from the basement to the fourth floor. Um, um, in the, the one, one I showed in Holland, in the, in the Netherlands, Netherlands. people who had moved from Suriname, Suriname to, Holland to Holland were demanding that this thing be put up because, because they are part of the historical narrative of the, um, of, of, the, of, the, of the Netherlands. Because they were not, they were in, not there in there before. before. Somebody call it emplacement. We demand that be part of that history. Almost every time you put up a monument, you sit on something. The ones I use in Ghana, just massive edifices, and huge, very, very big edifices. When you, when speak, you to speak to a Ghanaian, Ghanaian if not a professional, professional heritage, heritage practitioner, practitioner refers, refers to them unconsciously, in my mind, as, as European, European forts, forts, they distance themselves from it. From it. No. Um, class, um, class in Ghana, Ghana does any child learn? And, and I'm not I'm talking not about, about I'm, I'm, I did the research, I have the curriculum, unless, unless it has changed, changed in the last couple of years, couple of years. you know how these things happen. Things happen. Um, um, there's, there's, there's nobody, nobody in Ghana who's thought about slavery. slavery. When they talk when about, they talk about slavery, slavery is slavery across the ocean. The ocean. And there are people with grandparents, not great grand grandparents who were enslaved. I was interviewing a gentleman, a heritage practitioner, he was big in the GMBB. And when I spoke with him, the beauty, the beauty of interviews, interviews is that, is that when people, people get comfortable, get comfortable they, speak. they speak. That's why I love anthropology and that type of um, finding, finding data. data. He, began he began to talk about slavery. Those people speak about slavery. What slavery, about slavery. What what slavery are they talking about? about? And he slips. He said, but, but, but my grandfather had slaves. I was like, waiting for the shoe to drop. Yes, he had slaves on his cocoa plantation. And I'm like, oh boy, this is going to be heavy. It's like, it's they're like not they members, members of the family. Of the family. They're, they're integrating, integrating into, the into the family. And then, and then he takes a breath and says, well, well, unless, unless one, one of them decides, decides to become an upstart. I'm like, like really? really? They remember, they remember that, that they're enslaved. enslaved. Today, Today they, are they are members of the of family, family as long as, long as, as they, they behave. behave. The memory of slavery is there. But the people are so busy making money off the trauma of the transatlantic slave trade. That, that is not is convenient, convenient or economical. economical. I, began I began to write a paper some time ago about, about um, the role the of um, heritage, heritage industrial, industrial complex. complex. That's, what <laughs> That's what I called it. it. Um, it's the way the, the neoliberal, neoliberal requirements of developing, of developing countries has forced them to start looking at specific, specific heritages that are marketable, marketable not necessarily heritage that is useful to the people. They are very I'll give an example of my experience in Ghana. I walk up to the fort. This young gentleman comes up to me. And he, and he starts, starts talking. talking. I had not and learned everything, everything I, needed I, needed I needed to learn as an anthropologist, but I was learning very, very quickly. quickly. He gave me a sh um, He asked me what, what my name was, was. and he told and me his name. name. I went I into went the fort. When, when I came, I came out, out, the first person who approached me was him. He gave me a shell. The shell had my name on it. Welcome, Akwaba, to Ghana. And then he's standing there looking at me. It's a transaction. I quickly, I quickly caught on and, and said, no, I wasn't. He said, then buy this. this. I, bought I bought the thing. The thing. Remember, remember, I am a I'm diaspora African. African. Descendants across the water. water. What, what began, began to occur, to, occur to, me to me was the was sites the sites where the where slaves were stored, stored before shipping, shipping was still, still exploiting diaspora Africans. Africans. <laughs> when I when told, told him I'm not buying, buying he, said he said something which, which put everything, everything together. together. He, he said, said yeah. yeah, that's, that's why, why you bought, you bought a, ticket a ticket to Ghana. To Ghana. This, this is, is emotional, emotional experience, experience going on. I'm relating it, I'm feeling, feeling it. it. It upset, upset me because I quickly, quickly realized what was happening. This, this selling, of selling of heritage ain't no different, different from what was happening before. before. And who has been exploited? The same people. That, that fort, fort and, and these forts are on top, top of the memory of slavery in Ghana. Ghana. Right, right across the Caribbean, Caribbean they're, on they're on top of something, something. they're on, on top, top of different things. things. Every, Every time you choose, you choose to put up a monument, monument you, choose you choose to forget. To forget. And, that's and that's the point I'm trying, trying to, make. to make. We have, we to, have to be careful, careful what, what we remember and how we remember, because, because we, inherently we inherently need to forget. Need to forget. forget. And, and I'm not saying forgetting is a bad thing, because sometimes we need to. We all are human beings, and if you look at our memories, some of them we don't want to have to deal with at all. 
some societies would want to do that. I'm not trying to be prescriptive here. I'm just looking at the process and trying to illuminate, if you will, a process that we're all participating in, but are not necessarily conscious of. I'm sure. I'm sure, I'm sure most, most of you, of you would want to engage, to engage Dr. Fulgens after, after the closing, closing remarks, remarks and the vote of thanks, thanks which is which on the program. program. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, so much Mr. Mr. Ajiman, for facilitating this discussion. I know, I know it, has it has to continue, continue but, but unfortunately, unfortunately, we have, have to come to, come to an end. end. I want, want to thank, thank our, our online, online viewers, viewers as well for participating. For participating. And as, as this, this is our, our inaugural, inaugural lecture, lecture, we would we like, would to, like make to make a special, special presentation, presentation to, to Dr. Dr. Fulgens for being, being our first speaker. speaker. And we will and invite, invite um, the chair, chair of the board of the, board of the South, South Lewis Community, Community College, College to make to this make presentation. Thank you, Thank you very, very much, much Madam, Madam Chair. Chair. And, and as, as we close, close I would I like, like to invite, invite as Mr. Lucien, Lucien had said earlier, earlier where, where this, what the genesis, genesis of this was, in the Vice Principal's office. office. Principal office. office. So to, to make, make the closing, closing remarks, remarks, please help me welcome, welcome Dr. Dr. Merle St. Clair. Thank you. Good evening, one and all. I'm happy. It's a, it's a wonderful, wonderful night. night. Thank, Thank you, you Winston. Winston. I think, I think um, I'm, excited I'm excited too. too. I'm, I'm sure. sure. <laughs> I'm, excited I'm excited too because, because it, evoked it evoked a memory, a memory for me. me. And, and that, that memory, memory was, was the first, first time, time I realized, I realized a, fact a fact is not a fact. fact. It's not a fact. fact. I was, I was about, about 11. 11. And we changed, changed Columbus, Columbus Day, Day to National, National Day. Day. And, and all, all through, through primary, primary school, school, we had learned all the all history, history behind, behind it. it. And, and, and one, one day they, they said, said no, no, we're not, we're doing, not doing it anymore. It anymore. Christopher, Christopher Columbus, Columbus did not did discover St. Lucia, Lucia, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I and started, started thinking, thinking so, so what's, what's in a book? It's not true. true. <laughs> And of, and of course, from that, that time, time, I started, I started questioning, questioning practically everything. everything. And, and I think, and that's, I think why that's why I got into the field of information, information etc., et to, to try, try to combat, combat the, the forgetting. forgetting. But, then but then that's, that's a, a continuous and a, a, a lifelong battle. battle. But, but um, um, for all, all of us, I think, I think it has good food for thought. So thank you, Dr. Florgen. Having said that, and all of us want to go home and so on, I do have to say, my, My thank, thank yous. yous. So, so friends, friends colleagues, colleagues, and well wishers, I want, I want to, to offer a simple, simple um, thank, thank you. you. Well, well deserved, deserved one, one too. too. For, for everyone, everyone here, here for participating, participating in this expression of the overall goal, goal for this, this series, series um, um, for our understanding, understanding of each other, other our, our history, history, our, our present, present, and hopefully and anticipating and becoming more aware of our future. Congratulations, Congratulations to all staff, staff. and I'm, I'm so, so happy, happy to see so many faculty, faculty members, members, staff members. members. But those, those who brought, brought this series, series to fruition, fruition. Vladimir, Vladimir Lucien, Michael, Michael Hart, Hart, Natalie, Natalie Jolie Fanis, Roy Stan Emanuel, Vunamay Luisi. My, my right hand and my left hand, hand is Dora Henry. Henry. For, For taking, taking on this on challenge, challenge I could, I could not, not be, be more, more grateful. grateful. I know it, it was hectic. hectic. Listening, Listening to the, to the WhatsApp, WhatsApp messages, messages, the pinging throughout the night, the, night, the weekends, weekends, the light the bulb, bulb of ideas, ideas just, just moving. moving. Your, Your enthusiasm, enthusiasm 
the ready exchange, exchange of ideas, ideas. Very, very much, much appreciated. appreciated. Much, much so, so, so much, much more, more because, because um, um, we, are we are actually realizing, realizing our virtual, virtual office. office. Your, Your optimistic, optimistic attitude, attitude to, to all our challenges, challenges is just, just wonderful, wonderful, simply wonderful. wonderful. And I, I hope, hope that that, that enthusiasm, enthusiasm flows into, into our community, community as, as we implore your continued support, support and, participation and participation in this edifying opportunity for innovation and for sharing of ideas. We look, we look forward, forward to hosting, to hosting not, not only our faculty, our faculty and staff members, members but, also but also experts, experts from, from the society. society. So, so on behalf of the board and management, management of the college, of the college I, want I want to pledge, pledge our, our unwavering support, support to, the to the illumination, illumination series, series and, and look forward, forward to the, to the uprising, uprising of, of our, our fair Helen. Helen. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, thank you, Dr. Dr. St. Clair and, and she has she done the thank, thank you, you. But, you but you know, know every, every event has, has a lot of persons and support, support behind, behind it. it, so, so on behalf of Michael Hart, Hart who, who is also, also battling the cold, um, um, I, will I will offer thanks, thanks uh, on, on his behalf and on the committee's behalf. behalf. So, so the Illumination Committee and the SAL and Sarsadoos Community College would like to thank the following persons and entities for their generous assistance in producing this event. event. Our, Our sponsors, sponsors Flo, Flo, Valerie, Valerie Master Stores, Stores Computer, Computer World, World, and Ted Sanford of Asset Designs. Designs. Please, Please a round of applause, applause for all of them. And, and OECS, OECS as well. As well. To, to my, my left, left is a young gentleman. gentleman. He's out of he's uniform, uniform, but he's, he's actually a student, student here at the college, a very reliable student. student. He, he is a, a digital media student, student and my right hand, hand in the media club, club Mr. Mr. Omar Kombi, for assisting in the, in the live streaming. streaming. He's, he's almost, almost a faculty, faculty member. member. We also, we also want, want to, to thank, thank Ms. Janelle, Janelle Knight of the of ITS, ITS department and the entire SALCC ITS department. department. Mr. Mr. Blass, Blass, the head of the team, was, was here earlier and he was assisted by Mr. Lincoln Louis. Um, um, if he were here earlier, and you know how passionate Mr. Emmanuel is about his e learning, live streaming, he drives, he drives everybody, everybody crazy. crazy. So, so I, I'm, I'm sure I know, I know what, they what they went through this afternoon. To the setting, the setting that you're that in actually, actually now serves as, as our, our reading room, room for the, the library. library. And, and we have seriously, seriously displaced it. You, you wouldn't know that. that. We've taken out all the tables. You can, you can still, still see these are workstations. Work you see the bookshelves. Book so, so thank you so much to the staff of the Hunter G. Fasoir Library for allowing us the use of this room. And we inconvenienced them so much because it was the room that was most ready for our live streaming. It had the ports and all of the other technical stuff that I can't speak to readily available here. And it would have made it easier for the 200 plus viewers that I understand joined us this evening. Evening. So there are more things to come. I'm, I'm so happy for that. So thank you to Mrs. Kathy Butch McDiamond, um, our AV technician, who's also associated with the library, Mr. Garvin McDonald who is, is always, always devoted, devoted to our, to our events, events and, and who we can't do without. Really Thank you so much, so Garvin, for being here at this time. time. We know how far you have to go. go. Thank, Thank you, you to, to the, office the Office of the, of the Vice Principal. principal. You, you want to interrupt, interrupt my vote of thanks. thanks. A little bit unusual, unusual. bear, bear with, with us. I would like to issue a challenge. We, we always, always start, start things, things and we don't continue. continue. So the so challenge to the, the team is to sustain, sustain this. this. Thank, thank you. <laughs> I guess I that's guess adding that's to the, the thanks. thanks. The, the thanks, thanks means, means more. more. Yes, yes, we, we do, do intend, intend to do so. So, so, so let me get to my vote of thanks and then I'll address. Yes. Yes. Um, um, to our to moderator, Mr. Our interlocutor. I like that word. Mr. Solomon Adjiman. That, that even, even after, after retirement, he is, he is willing, willing to assist us here at the college. And he does continue, he does continue to, to, have to have a few classes, classes with our students. students. So we're really we're happy for Mr. Ajman's experience. experience. Our, our esteemed, esteemed inaugural, inaugural speaker. speaker. 
Dr. Winston Fulton. And I am not sure whether he has been congratulated on earning his PhD. So on behalf of the college, Dr. Fulton, let me say congratulations. We are extremely proud of you. We will support you when you get in trouble with the elite people that you keep referring to, but we think it's necessary. And, and I know I, know I can I pledge, pledge the, the, prince, the, prince, the vice principal's support and the board. So, so thank you so much, Dr. Dr. Fulgen. And of and course, to you, our audience. audience. Without, without you, our, our online, online audience, and our in-house audience, in audience. Without, without you, we would not have a lecture. lecture. So, so thank you so, so much for coming, for coming out, out tonight. tonight. <laughs> and we, we do, do pledge continuity. Our plan is actually to have this once a month. And today was our feeler to see how our Wednesday the night works, works for persons, person. so, so at, at the, the end, end we, we will get, get some, some feedback, feedback and, and plan, plan accordingly. accordingly. But, but we, we have, have a list of presenters already, presenters already and we invite persons, persons from the public, public with areas, areas of expertise, expertise that they are, that they are willing, willing to share to please, to please get, get in touch with us. us. Just, Just speak to some to Ms. Henry at the Vice Principal's Office and it will filter down to us and we will program accordingly. So thank you so much for being here, for your assistance, for your attendance, and for your participation. And we, and we invite you for some refreshments, refreshments after. after. And to and our to online audience, audience, maybe you maybe can have a cup of tea with us. <laughs> but thank but you for thank staying with us. Good night, Good night everyone. everyone. Get home Get safely. Home safely. <laughs>